Hey students, how are you all? Once again, welcome to another new session of your online English classes. In today's video, we're not going to discuss anything from the writing or from the literature section. We are going to discuss a bit of grammar. Our today's topic of discussion is the grammar chapter conjunctions. I hope you already know that this is a very important part of speech. In today's video, we are not going to discuss anything new, but we are just going to brush up the already existing knowledge of conjunctions that you have. So, it's basically going to be a revision of the chapter conjunctions. But before we start any discussion, it's very important to first have a look at the definition of the word conjunctions. So, the word conjunction can be defined as a part of speech that connects sentences, phrases or clauses together. So, conjunctions are basically connectors and these are the words that not just can connect connect sentences but these can also connect phrases and clauses together. They can bring different types of sentences, different types of phrases together. And there are three types of conjunctions that we are going to discuss in today's video. The first one is coordinating conjunctions, second subordinating conjunctions and the third are the correlative conjunctions. If you are asked to define what exactly a coordinating conjunction is, then you can write a coordinating conjunction is a joining word that links equal parts within a sentence. Alright, so you have to pay attention now students. Here in the whole sentence, when two things, if you divide the sentence in two parts, in two clauses, and if you have to bring in an equality, then you use the coordinating conjunction. Now the example that you can see here is the snow and rain hit hard today. Alright, so the function that snow plays in this sentence, the same function is played by rain as well. So these are two equal things and when we want to connect two equal things in a sentence, we use a coordinating conjunction and here the word and joins uh, the words, the nouns, snow and rain. Now, what do you see on your screen? What is written here? Fanboys. Uh, Alright, this is, this is something that doesn't sound like a very uh, a topic that is relevant to grammar. Right? It seems like this is the name of any particular band or a film name or something like that. Right? Let's just see what fanboys actually mean. No students, the word fanboys is neither the name of a movie nor the name of a band. Alright, so it is an acronym for a number of coordinating conjunctions. Now, what is an acronym? Uh, now, take for example the word Vibgyur. You already know what Vibgyur is. Whenever we are talking about the colors of a rainbow, we also talk about Vibgyur. Now, in the word Vibgyur, each letter V-I-B-G-Y-O-R stands for the colors of the rainbow, right? V uh, is there for violet, I for indigo, B for blue and so on. In the same way, in the word, the word fanboys that you can see, each letter stands for one coordinating conjunction. F stands for for, A stands for and, N stands for nor, B for but, O for or, Y for yet, S for so. So now all these are, all the seven letters that you can see in this word fanboys, each of these seven letters stand for these seven coordinating conjunctions. And if you want to read the, the examples that are given, you can just pause your screen and read carefully and minutely. 
Now, what exactly is a subordinating conjunction? This is the second type of conjunction that we are going to discuss today. And if you are asked to define this, you can write subordinating conjunctions are conjunctions that connect a main clause and a subordinate clause. Now, students, you have to know that a main clause can also be called an independent clause and the subordinate clause can also be called a dependent clause. Alright, now let's come to the next point. The clause beginning with the subordinating conjunction is always the subordinate clause which depends on the main clause and cannot exist without it. Now I, I hope you already know what an independent clause and a dependent clause is. Yes, so if you have a sentence which has both these types of clauses and if you find out, if you pick out the subordinating conjunction, you can easily identify that which part of the sentence is the independent clause or the dependent clause. So if you are ever asked to find out the subordinate clause in a sentence, you can first pick out the subordinating conjunction and whichever part of the sentence follows the subordinating conjunction will be the subordinating clause. Now here you can see two examples. Two different types of examples are there where in one, in the first case, you can see the main clause comes first and the subordinate clause comes next. In the second example, the subordinate clause is followed by the main clause. So let's just see the first sentence. You may be disappointed. Now this is an independent clause. Why? Because it is a complete sentence. It is complete in itself. It doesn't depend on anything. Yes. Now see the second one. If you fail or just you fail, now, this is not, you just cannot say, you cannot tell this to someone, right? This is not a complete sentence in itself. Here, the word if is the subordinating conjunction. And since we have already discussed that the part that follows a subordinating conjunction is a subordinate clause, you can easily say, you can easily understand that you fail is a subordinate clause here because it doesn't make any sense. The, only the words you fail. Now, the second example is, it first begins with the subordinate clause. You don't try. So, if you don't try this whole thing, this cannot be the uh, main clause. Because if you don't try, you cannot say it on its own. Right. It, it will not make any sense. But the next part, which is which the example says is the main clause, you see the words are, you are doomed. So this is a complete sentence in itself. It needs no support. It needs no backing from any other sentence. So if you say you are doomed, it will absolutely make sense. Yes. So in this case, the very first word is the subordinating conjunction. So if you are thinking that we can use conjunctions only in the middle of the sentences, then you are wrong because we can use conjunctions even at the very beginning of our sentences. Let us come to the very last type of conjunctions, the correlative conjunctions. And what are these? A correlative conjunction is essentially a coordinate conjunction used in pairs. So we do not use the correlative conjunctions uh, without their partner. Okay, so these are pairs and these do not function without their partner. A correlative conjunction gets its names from the fact that it is a paired conjunction. So you just have to keep this in mind that you always have to use it in pairs. Two things together you have to use and that it has a reciprocal or a complementary relationship. Yes, so they both complement each other. Both the words are used to show that there is a complementary relationship or the thing is being exchanged. Yes, so the very first example is not only but also. So let's just see the examples. They visited not only Germany, but also Spain. All right. So here, not only and but also have to be used together. You cannot just write not only. If you're writing not only, you also have to use but also. What is needed to be done is not only to work, but also to be patient. Once again, a very similar example. Mark works not only carelessly, but also hastily. All right. Once again, the very same kind of example. Now, next pair, the next set of correlative conjunctions is neither or nor. We use these always to suggest some kind of a negativity in the sentence. So, neither the employees nor the boss was at work. So, neither this nor that. And you can never use neither without nor. This you have to keep in mind. 
neither you nor i want to go to this part today so let's not once again a very similar example neither mark nor his wife is very tall now let's come to the very last set of correlative conjunctions either or which have to be used together either today or tomorrow i must work either alex or samuel will go i'll either write to you or phone you next week so students you have to be very careful about this you can never use not only and but also separately neither and nor separately or even either and or separately these conjunctions always have to be used in pairs all right students with this we come to the end of today's discussion on the grammar topic conjunctions i hope you all found this video helpful thank you and goodbye